good late evening to you back in the Midwest. Uh, if if you're if you're in God's country, good night to you. Uh, for those of us who are in Phoenix, it's um, what ten twelve ten twelve p.m. here in Phoenix, uh, one twelve a.m. back in Indiana, and um, Purdue has fallen to UConn. 75 to 60, as you all know. Um, it's uh, a lot of people said bittersweet. It's tough to swallow, whatever you want. Um, but uh, um, UConn proved all the people correct that said they were just head and shoulders above everybody, including Purdue. It's tough to tough to swallow for a Purdue fan. Um, just because I look forward to this, I look forward to Purdue uh, proving some people in the east coast specifically east coast uh, bias media wrong but they couldn't do it couldn't do it today <clears throat> and it came down to guard play um yukon's guards were incredible like i don't know how else how else you could view the the style of play the execution the physicality um the the relentlessness they they were so good on the boards um you know, they did the little things. They um, uh, they kept plays alive. Uh, the fact that Purdue got out rebounded is noteworthy. I think the way Purdue got out rebounded is also noteworthy. The fact I think it was I think it was the guards who propelled that number. I think UConn out rebounded Purdue by like seven. Um, tough way. To, I mean. <clears throat> We all had nightmare scenarios in our head about what it would look like. We didn't want to see, well, we didn't want to see Edie's career <clears throat> to end. And uh, one thing I think none of us wanted to see is him not to be able to uh, show who he was on the biggest stage. I think just to kind of honor uh, the way he's played, the consistency, the, the uh, re again, relentless on his side relentlessness of Zach Eady. Um, you wanted to see him hold his own and do even more, and he did it again. The problem was, the, 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 the major problem for Purdue tonight was that uh, we've always said that the, you, need a, you need a big three to, uh, for Purdue to be really successful. And tonight you had Smith play a, a solid to okay game. He wasn't hitting his, um, his uh, uh, elbow uh, jumper which could have propelled, could have made things a little bit better, no doubt about it. But Jones and Lawyer simply uh, couldn't get free for shots, and when they got looks, uh, they didn't knock them down. They didn't have a lot of opportunities. Purdue hardly shot the three-pointer at all. A very, very odd um, game for Purdue to not be able to even find their looks. But it really, again, is a compliment to the way UConn defended Purdue. Hurley's game plan was really good. Um, they're, they're a great team. They're a great team. Purdue is a very, very, very good, if not great team, but this UConn team is head and shoulders above the college basketball world, and it's easy to, I think it's easy for me to admit that, and I don't know if it's easy for all Purdue fans to admit it, but, um, tough, tough way to end it, but not the, not the end of the world either. I mean, the thing that I, I hope you are doing the same thing. But the thing I'm going to focus on is the fact that Purdue did make the first Final Four in 44 years, and then they went the next step, got to the championship, and then they got beaten by the best team. And um, if these two teams play 10 times, what do you think? Do they um, – does Purdue win two or three? Do they – I mean, I said one to three earlier. I've thought about it a little bit more. I think – uh, Purdue has the ability to <clears throat> to do some things a lot better than they did tonight, obviously. But that UConn team, they're just great. Um, Dan Hurley's also a massive jackass, and um, and he proved that tonight too. Great coach, horrible turd of a dude. So, um, but um, that's tough. Let's uh, let's look at a little bit of a. I'm not going to look too deep into stats. Not a ton of you guys here on live. I understand why it's super late. Um, if you're anything like me, uh, at best you feel uh, melancholy, I think. At worst, you're probably sad or angry. 
Um, but I don't know if that's, I don't know if we have much to be sad or angry about. But uh, as, a, as a friend of mine said earlier, I want Purdue to win because I want to be that guy who can, you know, kind of walk in and just like say, yeah, I, you know, I'm a Purdue fan, the reigning national, reigning national champion Purdue Boilermakers. And we didn't get to see it tonight. It's not all lost, but I think uh, I can tell you there were about 40,000 Purdue fans in Phoenix today that wanted to walk out of that, that arena um, and say that we, we are the alums, we are the fans, we are the, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're Purdue family and, um, and we're now national champs. You can add that to uh, all the good things that, that define Purdue, but now um, they proved it on, on the biggest stage. Not this year, not this year. Um, Painter proved a lot this season. He proved he can, he can break through. And um, obviously having a guy who's so damn good, Zach Eady, his, uh, his will, his, his strength, his agility was all on display at different times tonight. And he had to do so much because there was just not anything else being created on offense. That's a, that's, that's a tough, it's a tough scenario for anybody, but <clears throat> as UConn started collapsing more and more on him, um, it was like, uh, he even showed it was difficult on him, right? He had a period of what, four or five minutes. I'm not, I haven't looked, I didn't watch the game on TV, obviously. Um, and I watched it a long way away. So my account might be a little bit off because I was up in the four hundreds, um, in the, in the stadium. But still had a great angle, could see things, um, and didn't have to rely too much on the video boards. Again, State Farm's video boards are too small for as big of a place as it is. I mean, you need, they need like Jerry World type, type video boards in that place. But um, yeah, let's look at the stats real quick. And the first thing let's talk about is Purdue's final record of the season. They're 34-5. and five. And this is the hardest thing that uh, nobody wanted this to end. I, I said in jest, half jest, tongue-in-cheek, maybe not. <clears throat> that this morning's this morning's quick cast was the longest quick cast I've done. It was an hour and twenty minutes because I just you know I was enjoying the banter, of course, uh, that you guys were enjoying. Looking forward to the game. A lot of you guys were nervous, and it was good to calm down together if that was the case. But we didn't want to see the season end. And watching the guys walk off the court, you know, that last time is really tough because we don't get to see Lance Jones in a Purdue uniform again, and we don't get to see. Um, Mason Gillis in a Purdue uniform, Ethan Morton, um, and of course uh, Zach Eady, and that's 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 really tough because he's uh, there's so many complimentary things in the post game said by Painter. Um, he had another brilliant, a brilliant presser as he did all tournament, but um, yeah, he uh, it's it's tough to see this era over the Zach Eady era over at Purdue. Um, one team gets to walk home happy at the end of the tournament, right? One team uh, walk home. What one team gets to end their season happy, and um, even making it to the last game, you're still not very happy at that. So, uh, but 34 and five, incredible season, most wins ever by a Purdue team. UConn finishes 37 and three. Um, I still don't understand how they lost uh, two of those games. I just don't get it. And uh, my son tried to explain to me his thought, his theory, <laughs> looking at the stats. But the, the big thing is they um, they simply weren't able to shoot as much against Creighton. And Creighton was white hot. Uh, the Seton Hall game doesn't make any sense. That's not that good of a team. I mean, I know they won the NIT, but come on. Uh, UConn was great. Um, Edie, 37 points, 10 boards, um, two blocks, and he had both of those blocks in one defensive possession, an, an incredible possession where it was almost like it looked like Edie was, was Painter had unleashed the hounds, right? Allowed him to say, okay, now hunt, hunt for block shots, and he did on one possession, but obviously can't do that all the time because of the um, – because the way he's being coached to not foul, not go after those because it's so important to the team. Um, he's absolutely needed. Smith finishes with uh, <clears throat> 12 points, 8 assists, 2 steals, 3 boards. So no triple-double this year for, for Braden Smith in spite of getting so close so many times. Tonight wasn't quite as close, obviously, but no triple-double for him the whole season. 
uh, off the bench. This is incredible. There are a couple things that are just incredible about this box score. And again, testament, uh, testament to, to how good UConn is, but Brew gets two points off the bench. Two points off the bench, and those points were super memorable. Cam Heidi's uh, putback dunk was uh, it, that was a great moment of the game. But uh, Heidi goes one for one shooting, two points. Uh, Gillis, let's see, I, I was curious about this. Gillis shot the ball twice, finishes zero points. Um, he had one that he was really trying to make something happen in the second half. I can remember he was pretty well defended left side. He took a three. I was like, I was good to see. It was good to see he was doing that. I think Paint was really trying to tell the team you gotta you gotta start looking for shots because a lot of guys would get the ball and they would uh, they didn't have the space they are accustomed to having, and um, and so guys were you know coming up and and pump faking and then trying to get right back into the the middle, but he kept Colvin in for a lot of minutes because of that uh, ability to shoot. I think Colvin shot okay shot twice. I only remember one of his shots. Early in the game, he had a shot, and uh, then he just, it was kind of a, a desert, if you will. But uh, Purdue threw a press at UConn. Uh, that was uh, good to see that Purdue was trying to throw some, some swings, some different swings. Uh, but the hard thing about that trap press, that's a zone-based press, and Purdue has to drop down it back into the man, in man, and they were way out of position every time UConn broke it. Uh, and they had a guy open in the corner on the other side of the uh, court, and then they would just kind of go into a slow motion versa, version of their offense as they just ate up clock, kept Purdue at an arm's length. Um, Lance Jones finishes his last game at, at Purdue with five points, uh, two for three field goals. Uh, Purdue only shot 15 free throws, and then, like I said, from deep, one from one of seven from three point, they hit 14% of their shots. Um, I don't know much more have I have to say, but the big thing I want to uh, I want to reiterate is that uh, I'm not angry at all. Uh, I'm a little upset just because I, I like you. I just wanted to wanted to see uh, the next step, the next logical step for the program to get to that national championship to or to win the national championship. But one to be. I mean, you just can't. You watch a team play like UConn just did. I don't, know. I don't know what else you can say. Just that's a, that's a great team. That's it. Some of you guys are on here. Appreciate it. Appreciate you who are uh, um, who are here for post game. So Jeff is the first. He says he's the first, and he was the first. And not only was he the first to make a comment, there was hardly anybody on here when I went live. Um, so uh, congrats. Uh, Maury Mohill93 says, Boiler up. Good to see you, sir. Uh, Jeff says... 25-year-old guard. This is this is the modern era of college basketball. 25-year-old uh, guard um, who looks the part. You know, he looked like a man compared to Purdue's guards who are going to get bigger and stronger, but um, they could not match up with him. But even uh, UConn's guards that weren't exceptionally old, uh, Castle, for instance, just very, very solid player, um, but... Both Newton and Spencer are old, so um, I don't know how old both of them are, but um, Mohel93, good point. Ever grateful, ever true, as we should be. And I can tell you, gosh, I want to reiterate this. The, the people that I got to say hi to today and the reunion of sort um, in that, what do they call it, the West Bank or whatever, no, West Bank, <laughs> um, West Gate, there you go. The West Gate here in Phoenix was just tons of fun. Tons of fun to be around everybody, and um, really good, really good to put some faces with some of the screen names and get to talk to many of you guys. And man, it was fun. Just, just fun day, and good to see old friends. I got to uh, see uh, my pal Roy, who was my boss when I was an RA, and um, spent time with my brother-in-law. I just, <clears throat> it was a great time, uh, great time all the way around, and great day. Great day. Totally worth being here. Uh, that's the other thing. I just I don't regret this trip at all, in spite of the the ending of the of the reason for coming here. Um, the reunion portion was was definitely great, and seeing Purdue come out in such force was just an awesome awesome show for Purdue fans. Kevin Albuquerque says, "As much as I'm pained uh, by this defeat, I'm grateful for the ride." Yeah, that's that's something I think we're going to feel more and more of as time goes on, right? Tonight's tough. 
if you're like me, your voice is gone, you're probably fatigued if you were out. I mean, we started, um, you know, hanging out uh, and uh, I mean, it was sunny, it was hot and we started at noon. The game started at six and yeah, it was, it's a long day. And um, so everybody's tired on top of being melancholy and um, yeah, it's a, uh, I think we're gonna. I think in, I think time will uh, heal some of these wounds. We'll feel a lot better about this, and um, nothing to nothing to be sad or angry about. Yeah, for just a hell of a season. Need a bur- being verse says, "Love my boilermakers no matter what." Yep, I'm with you. Jill says, "Proud of our boilers." Thanks for tuning in, Jill. Good to see you. Um, Jeff says, "I'm sad." <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, Paul and Bo outdoors says, "Fouls were very lopsided." First. UConn, don't know what that means. Uh, fouls were lopsided. Um, there was a period of time where, and this isn't the reason, it's not even close to the reason Purdue lost, but that ref that we all have grown to know and disdain, the, the prancy official, um, that I don't, I don't understand how the NCA grades that guy out well enough that he gets to even have a job, let alone officiate in the championship he missed so many calls in a row at one point like it was just completely horrible officiating I um, horrible both both ways though that's the other thing like he he sucks he's ridiculously bad at his job and it's a, that's a shame that he you even notice him in a game like this where you have so many good players on the court I mean you've got tons of guys that some are going to be in the league next year obviously you've got Probably five players on the court. I would say five players on the court that are going to be in the NBA next year. Most of them on UConn, of course. Um, and then you've got others on Purdue that I think in, eventually will be in the league too. And and so you've got all these names and faces that history is going to judge very kindly. And instead, we notice this tool bag official again too many times this year. Uh, Matt Lenville, ever grateful, ever true, ever true word. Uh, Jason Schrader says uh, it is incredible how well they shut down the three. Yeah, it, it was really masterful, really masterful. Their defense was excellent. Jeremiah Easterbrook said thoughts on the game plan of not getting threes tonight. Painter called it going to the well of Edie, but seven three point attempts. Yeah, um, I mean it looked to me, and granted, I I was I'm. Kind of my, my opinion is tainted by being in the arena, but it looked to me like there just wasn't a lot of space opened up. Generally, you know, Purdue will hammer it into Edie. The team will choose to drop down, right, to, to double, to bracket him, and then that will leave just a, 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 a an opening for the three-point shooter. I mean, Purdue didn't have space to, to shoot, and when they decided to shoot, it seemed like, they were well defended. So the only thing they could have done is completely thrown out their normal game plan. And we talked about this on the way home. The only way you do, only way Purdue counters the way UConn played defense on them is to throw out what you're used to playing, throw out what got you there. And that I understand why you wouldn't want to do that, especially in the first half. I mean, Purdue was down six at the first half, at the end of the first half. And Smith had that, I mean, great shot. He was falling to the to to the right. Uh, really great shot from where we were sitting. I was like, man, there's no way he's gonna hit this because he was he was fading so far to the right. Incredible shot that helped propel Purdue back into making the game close again. And they they leave the house the, they leave the half down by six. So do you throw everything out of that point because you say, okay, yeah, we need to create more threes. So do you kind of throw out your entire system? I don't think that's the right time to do that. And then by the time you realize, well, uh, we're not getting any looks, regardless of the adjustments, you know, the, um, it just felt like the game was out of hand. And UConn with a lead, man, they're good. They're, I mean, they're good, but they're really, really good and disciplined and can really uh, clamp down on a team once, once they have the lead. Um, Jeremiah Easterbrook, oh, was this? I don't know why did I say that already? So I don't know the game plan. Yeah, sorry. Tom Ray said hard fought, but not enough offense for Purdue. Not even close, right? Um, Edie did exactly what he was expected to do, but we needed better uh, play calls to get our threes flowing. Yeah, and that's the 
a handle, my pal handle, and I were, were talking at halftime or texting at halftime, and I said, this is where Paint and um, PJ have to have to earn their money, right? PJ's got to come up with some magic, some sets, and Paint has to dig into the bag of tricks. And um, in hindsight, I just, other than completely radically overhauling the system, I just don't, I don't know how you counter what UConn did. So, uh, Andrew Wide says, Purdue family, uh, this team is special. Yeah, they're very special. This is, and I think as the years go by, uh, when my son goes off to Purdue, hopefully he gets to see a special run as a student. I mean, I just keep getting reminded how great it is for students to get to see this. Purdue students were so, this Purdue student section was absolutely full an hour before tip-off. And you looked on the other side, UConn's was like three rows full. And I said, okay, they'll fill in. Because that's kind of what UConn did all day at the bars and restaurants around here. They came late. Um, and uh, no, they didn't show up. If you didn't know this, uh, they, they gave uh, tickets to Arizona State students that wanted to uh, to fill in UConn's student section. Section That's pretty embarrassing if you ask me. I, I just, I can't believe it. I know they won national championship last year, but the... If UConn can be disappointed in anything, it's that. Uh, the showing up of their students was silly. I mean, it's what it's all about. It's for the, you know, the, the reaction of the students should be, like, paramount. But Ed Albany's the gummy bear king says, uh, my stomach hurt. Uh, yeah, I believe it. I, I'm, I, be, I bet there are a lot of people in knots, and some people direct message me on Twitter and talked about that. So I get that. Brock Stepler says, fun year, boiler up. UConn just better, unfortunately. The best, right? Um, excited for the future. Same here. And now we can start, we can talk about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, excited, ex- very excited for the, for what's coming. Um, and it will be different. It's going to be very different. It's going to be unusual to not have the safety blanket of a, um, a seven foot four Superman. Uh, but I have faith in the coaching staff. I just think it's going to take a little bit of time to figure this out. I don't know what they've got planned in the summer like tour type stuff, but this team could really benefit from that type of trip, obviously, playing other teams. They'd lose some games, but they'd learn from it. <clears throat> There's going to be a lot of uh, growing up that's needed for um, uh, these guys, these young guys. They're going to be asked to do a lot quickly, at least three or four of them, I think. Might have a couple red shirts, but it's going to be a different team. So we'll see what happens to to the rest of the team and who sticks around. And um, I, I hope everybody that can stay will stay. But we'll see about that. Um, Nolan23 says, needed lawyer Smith to get hot from three. Absolutely. And um, hard to get hot when you're just getting so few opportunities. But, I mean, even the shots, like lawyer had a really good look, I think, from the top of the key, if I'm remembering correctly, that would have been, that would have helped the bleeding. I think Purdue was down 12 or 15 at this point. And it didn't look even close to in from my angle. Uh, I think he hit the back of the rim. Um, yeah, just just not their day shooting. So, uh, Mr. Matt DSM says, I wish Gillis had taken his shot more. Same. Uh, throughout the tournament, uh, but I love his hard work defending and getting rebounds across the games. I, I think you guys saw this. Uh, Drew Brees wore a Gillis jersey in the arena. That was cool. <clears throat> He was up on the on the big screen a couple times. He and Bill Murray, who Murray's son, is on UConn's coaching staff, and so they had a kind of a back and forth. It was fun. It was silly, um, but I think Breeze has a lot of respect for Gillis because of that uh, work ethic and the hard nose kind of. Uh, he's an emblem of the of the Purdue way, right? Even though Gillis didn't score a ton of points, you know, like he came off the bench, he he humbled himself there, and then when he came in, he did what he was asked to do. Uh, great, great player. Uh, player. Jill says, uh, just sad for the kids, seniors, but still so proud. UConn team was great, um, but their coach taints it. Yep. Max says, what's up? How are you? Uh, Nolan23, Hurley is a jackass. Yep. Repeatedly charging at Purdue players when play stopped for timeout. I don't understand how this is okay. I also don't understand how the NCAA continues to allow coaches to be so on the floor and so involved in the game. They did not put their foot down at all this season. It wasn't just Hurley. It was many, many coaches. And they have to do something about it. Um, they just have to. But when you have the bench benchmark or standard bearer for coaches doing this shit throughout the game um, and they don't do anything about it, I guess nothing's going to happen. 
Um, Golden twenty three continues. Uh, Heidi and Colvin uh, should have played more this season. Yeah, the, I think we can we can look through the the prism now and say a lot of things in hindsight. And we all talked about it here. I think everybody was uh, pretty consistent. Uh, Purdue fans wanted to see a little bit more, but it's a pretty damn good record. Pretty damn good record. Hard to hard to second guess too much, right? At Albany's, as Hurley said, uh, we wanted Lawyer Smith and Jones have less than eighteen points combined. They said if Edie could sc- Edie could score thirty five points, they're okay with it. Brilliant game plan. Brilliant game plan. So I hope he goes to Kentucky. Hope you come down. Win another championship. Uh, Tom Ray says Hurley was an embarrassment to the league, to the league, to college basketball. His uh, antics should be punished because it was obvious his players behaved better. Um, he's, yeah, he's he is. I'm sure they. I'm sure he's worshipped by UConn fans. Positive. You win two championships in a row. They're gonna. It's gonna gloss over a lot of the bad, right? Track dog. Crowsness says, I love my Boilers, but we just got beaten by a better team, period. Yep, I agree. Maniacally Steve says, the Izzo plan, uh, Ed uh, Albanese, uh, except, except Dan has the horses to pull it off. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. It's exactly the way Tom Izzo tries to play Purdue, right? You you, you put um, your big against his, and then you say, we're going to play man, and we're going to try to completely disrupt Purdue's guards. Except UConn has has two NBA guards next year on their uh, on the perimeter. Then a third that'll probably play there in two years. Uh, they just they're just great out there. They're great out there. And then the guys come off the bench and they play great defense. Not very great offense. Not know where the offense, but very good off the bench too. Um and Eichley, uh Steve correctly apologizes, says, I'm sorry, high down, sorry. I'm like, yeah, you should, you owe me a big apology. I'm kidding. Good to see you. Um, let's see, go down a little bit here. Good conversation between you guys, sounds like, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward to some other comments. Um Justin Boatwright says, well, at least Purdue is a national runner up. If only E D has one more year of eligibility. He does. He does have one more year of eligibility and he's not using it. He's he's um the delayed gratification of him going pro, I think, was awesome for Purdue. Uh, it turned out great for him. His consistency, again, his um, his focus, the team reflected it. The fact they were so businesslike during this time in Phoenix is really a reflection on Edie as much as anybody else. You know, you're, teams start um, becoming the the personality of their leadership, right? And this team really reflected Zach Edie's professionalism and his focus and his kind of just determination all season. Um, yeah. yeah. He does have another year of eligibility, though. Mr. <clears throat> I can't pronounce that. It's not a word. T-Z-J-J-D-W. Jeez. Purdue alum of 15. Moved to the East Coast for a job and visited Purdue campus last year. When I walked into grad school building, I saw Swanigan's poster still hanging on one of the doors. Tears, yeah, yeah. So when I graduated, I, I too moved to the Northeast. I lived in the Boston area for two and a half years. Um, and uh, I was reminded some of the things I didn't like living in the Boston area today before the game, being around UConn fans. It's too bad. There's some good ones, too. We had a great time. We went to a little cigar bar uh, before the game, and we talked to a guy who's a uh, UConn alum, and he's also a professor at UConn now. He's the same age as me. That's funny hearing a guy same age as me, you know, uh, number one, those guys look pretty old that are that age who graduated back in the late '90s. But, um, but he's he's a tenured professor and he's about to retire from UConn and he also teaches at University of Miami. He was great, really pleasant, nice dude. But all the buffoons were hanging out over in that Westgate area. So, yeah, clowns. Um, and there are clowns on the Purdue side too. But it looked like. UConn was, yeah, pretty douchey. Um, E2B Inverse says, the way too early list I read tonight already has Purdue ranked number six to start the next season. Wow. Means little, but a reminder that Purdue isn't going away. I, boy, that is high. If That's high. And I know they'll have three starters returning. And I think we can, we can uh, now that the season's over, it's not really, it's too early to talk about it, but this is what you talk about in the offseason. So, at least the season's over, but 
boy, a lot of new moving parts, and we don't know exactly how the roster will settle. So, a lot of moving parts, though. So, number six, man, I, I would think they would land. I, I mean, there's a lot of respect out there for Painter and his ability to get teams to gel quickly. But I just, I can't see him higher than 15, 16, something like that. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, six is crazy high. That's amazing. That's an immense amount of, if that happens, that is an immense amount of respect for Painter and nothing else. And they, Purdue's recruiting class is good. I think, what are they, in the teens, I think, is where they settled after it's all said and done. And there's some still some things that are moving around, obviously, with NIL stuff. But, yeah, yeah. Um, Nathan Dolan says, sad ending, but great year to bounce back to the championship was incredible. Uh, UConn, just too good. Agreed. Edie not getting much help tonight. Agreed. Hurley is a complete tool. Agreed. Hope he goes to Kentucky. Man, you and I. Same, same page, Nate. Uh, Jay says, uh, great year, but Painter was out coached again. Guard play was a problem. I don't, I mean, Hurley is a great coach, and he had a great game plan, and to, to, to paint with that brush, I have a hard time with that. You can if you want. That's okay. I think UConn's horses were the story. Um, and the way he prepared them, so that's the longer view of the way he coaches them, the way he has them just dialed in in the tournament is incredible. That two-year run, I, I, I don't think we'll ever see anything like that again where a team just shreds everybody in their path in this era this is a lot different than the 60s and 70s you know the uh you know i think of ucla's dominance in the in the ncaa tournament national championship after national championship after national championship championship but even still the differential the way uconn beats teams is just incredible so uh yeah um Need to be in verse says society rewards bad behavior when you win. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Hurley is in an isolated case. I'm thankful Matt Painter represents Purdue. He's he, Matt Painter's been really good representing Purdue, representing everybody. Um, he's just been great, and he has put himself at the next level now because of the Final Four. The final making it to the final, right? That's a big deal. But the Final Four is the label part, right? The next label to for him to acquire to really put him to set him in a even loftier status among college basketball coaches is, is to earn a national title. And like I said, I think, I think they can, but we got to see what happens with this next team and how quickly they start gelling. And is 2026 my, my prediction of a, another Final Four? Uh, it's a hot take, I think, because you say, okay, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty quick, right? When you think about how, you know, how this team really, um, it, it didn't all come together that quickly, right? I mean, Zach Eady obviously is, uh, catalyst he is the catalyst uh, but it's going to be different and painter and company uh, are going to have to overhaul the way the offense is played um, I, you know they'll still have a big we, we know that there are tons of bigs on this upcoming roster but there's no big like that <laughs> so uh, nolan 23 says heidi's putback dunk was nasty that was super fun um, and that's another one of those glimpses we see these glimpses of the future and they're pretty great um, yeah i agree um, Alex Isrig said, Isrig says, appreciate all the content this season. Look forward to next. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, a lot of kind words from a lot of people today. Um, it's, uh, I really appreciate it, and it's it's been fun. It's been fun hanging out with everybody all season. Uh, Noam23 says, looking forward to seeing catchings. Yeah, I'm so stoked. <laughs> stoked about him. The thing that I thought about today is if you could take one or two of those incoming recruits and plug them into this year's team, let's say a year from now, would they be able to make that much of a difference versus that team, that UConn team? And I don't know. I mean, like, I, I look at the, the, the build of those dudes, like, you know, they're men, again. And so you have these, t these, t these freshmen coming in that are going to be great, there's no doubt, but they're going to be young, and um, um, are they going to be ready right out of the box? I mean... We'll see. We'll see. It's asking a lot for that many freshmen to do that. Last time you had that many freshmen come in and play that sort of role. I mean, it's pretty close. With Smith and Lawyer, obviously Paint knows, you know, when he sees a guy that like has the potential, he gives him, you know, he gives him the ability to go and do big things and, and to affect the team. But the last time we saw something like that really is the baby boilers. So you had 
I think he had three guys start right away, if I'm remembering correctly. I think Scott Martin was the third, not um, um, Juwan Johnson. And then Juwan Johnson, of course, took that spot as he started getting more and more comfortable, and then Martin transferred out. So, but that's that was pretty big. To have three freshmen starting is really incredible, and I think I'm remembering that correctly. Maybe I'm not, but I think I am. Um, Kevin in Albuquerque says, wait, Ed Albany says, so what's the plan now? Will you go online from time to time? Football talks. Okay, so here's my immediate plan, if you care. Um, I am going to try to do something from AJ's this week um, for the spring game, maybe a little look back at basketball after we've had a couple days to digest a bit. Um, but in the longer view, generally, you know, our content turns way down in the summer, I'll try to do something as I'm inspired or a, a, as a reaction. I don't really do things that are guessing, meaning based on other people's practice reports, Purdue doesn't really open up practice to everybody. So um, I kind of wait until I can actually see football with my own two eyes, right, and start reacting to the way the team looks. And um, yeah, I'm excited, but yeah, this is the this is what I've done for a couple of years, and um, and the handsome hour will probably start back up as a regular feature. I think we did it Monday at 9. I can never remember things after it, they're past, but Monday at 9 p.m. Uh, starting in the fall, we'll get back to a regular show, which will be good. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I don't think we're going anywhere. Um, let's see, Kevin Albuquerque said, I heard from IU fans that Purdue students at Mackey were chanting, IU sucks, I see no factual errors. Yeah, exactly, it's just kind of like them observing. Um, Maniacally, Steve says starting lineup is going to be interesting. I think one and five are set. TKR and Smith. Does Lawyer keep his spot? So this was asked to me tonight with a friend of mine. I say yes. And uh, the reason I say yes is I think Painter trusts him. Um, will Colvin start? Does Heidi start uh, next to Miles? Can a freshman break into the starters? Yes, I think a freshman will break into the starters. Uh, maybe it won't be immediate. I don't think you're going to see what we saw this year. What Purdue did, starting the same five from start to finish the season, is simply incredible. I, I think I talked about this before the game, but it is nuts to do that. Having everybody stay healthy, injury-free, what a blessing for this team. I mean, that's that's really very, very noteworthy. I don't think you see that next year. I think there's going to be more playing with the starting lineups and playing with the roster as Painter figures out who plays well together. He kind of knew what he was getting into this year because he had so many proven commodities and he had one incredibly proven commodity. I still don't think, I still don't think, and this is like some of you guys, you know, playing Monday morning quarterback or above talking about Painter, but I still don't think that lineup that we saw all season that earned, what did we say, 34 wins, um, was the best lineup. I still think Gillis was a better lineup. And I understand why you'd bring him off the bench because he's so steady, but... I mean, what do I know? But I just, the, the offense never looked completely crisp or like humming along to me perfectly with the high end, low post. I just never. <laughs> so uh, I, I talked about this a couple times. I didn't really editorialize too much, especially as they were rolling, because I'm like, what the hell are you going to say? You know, um, you could be better than, you know, winning nine in a row. But <clears throat> I don't know what, in the long view, I don't know what Painter could have done to get this team to be better than that UConn team in the championship. Let's pretend for a second we had all the facts in front of us. We knew could have could Painter have gotten them ready to beat UConn with this roster in those many months? I don't think so. I think UConn's that good, and um, so just my opinion. If we're going to keep just throwing out opinions, why not? Kyle says, "Can't wait to see the next steps." Uh, can't wait to see who steps up next year. Yeah, agreed. It's gonna it's gonna be so much fun. Um, <clears throat> when Ikeley Steve says Purdue is so young, if they go with that lineup, that's three juniors and two sophomores. Uh, you've gone up there to the, to the last one. Yeah, uh, Justin Boatwright says, boy, the pandemic year really is uh, strong, generating the extra year of eligibility for players. Yeah, and it's it's a gift that just keeps on giving, and I mean that sarcastically. I. I Enough already. I mean, enough with having men playing with boys. Let's, let's, I mean, that came out wrong. Um, but goodness gracious, I'm ready for this era to be over, and it feels like it never ends. I think I'm told that the next year is the end of the pandemic era affecting eligibility of players. 
But it feels to me like if you just ask the NCA nicely, they'll be like, yeah, sure. And then the next guy, they'll say, no, uh, NCA continues to suck. Um, Nikki uh, Asimov says, catchings, Heidi, Colvin equals Showtime Boilers. Goodness gracious, it's going to be fun. <laughs> like the athleticism, the quickness, the change of pace. I think you're going to see a very fast athletic Purdue team. And I think it's going to f- absolutely floor a lot of the dumbasses that are out there in the Big Ten and elsewhere. The, the stupid people that talked about Edie. Um, I hope you guys kept receipts. And when they try to act like nice, nice now, I got no time for that because that stuff got really personal, it seems like. And they, these people don't know anything about that guy. They, they don't know even as much as you and I do where, you know, you stayed after a game with your kid and Edie was kind enough to stay for two hours signing autographs and taking cell phone sh- uh, shots. And these people bad enough. This kid's character. Um, suck it. Uh, got no time for him. And I hope I, uh, these people are going to try to move on. Like, a, you know, I, have you ever watched a dumb sitcom where somebody's character completely changes? Or um, uh, a drama where they're cha- you know, the bad guy becomes the really likable person? Yeah, that doesn't work in real life for me. Um, there's nobody asking for forgiveness. That's the key. Nobody's asking for forgiveness. I'm not. I'm not going to forget what you did. Jared Bilski says, ha ha, well, I don't know what that is. I don't care. Um, Matt uh, DSM says, sorry, silly question. What kind of banner goes up? Um, I think what you'll see, uh, I don't think they'll put a, a runner up for uh, final four and um, finalist, NCAA finalist. But I think you'll see one, so it'll just say finalist. Um, I think that'll be it. So... That's pretty good. Um, it'll have the Final Four logo on it. It'll say NCAA finalist. That's my guess. I think Butler did something like that. That's why I think that. Likely, Steve says, no room. Uh, track dog and list to transfer out and incoming freshmen go to prep. Yeah, there's, there's, um, the roster is tight. And so this is where do certain guys head on to other places? Um, I don't ever want to suggest this, especially on this forum. I wouldn't do that. If I was having a conversation with one of you guys in person, I might talk about this. But on the record, I don't want to do that. And I really don't want to, I don't see anybody on the team that looks like a character issue where I'm like, that's when I start thinking it'd be great if this guy or that guy transfers out. It always comes down to character and what are they doing? Are they are they bad for the chemistry? Are they bad for the team? Do they represent Purdue poorly? That sort of thing. And I don't see any guys on the roster like that. So I'd like everybody to stay that wants to stay, but I know it's not possible. Um, Derek Wade says, Edie and Purdue were exposed. Yeah, Derek, you're a jackass. Um, I, I mean, like, exposed by what? Exposed by what? By a team being the best team head and shoulders above everybody else. Yeah, they're the best team. Purdue was number two in America. Every metric agrees with this. Purdue's really good. UConn's better. <clears throat> um, hot take, bud. Great. <clears throat> Um, yeah, um, at Albany says everyone, yeah, I don't care. Nolan 23, um, uh, minding my own business at church last weekend, some dude says, banner up. Yeah, um, people are stupid. Most of them struggle to be gracious. Uh, Ryan Clip says, most fun this season, my 33 years on the planet. I'm third generation boiler. And I'd trade uh, nothing about the season, agreed. Uh, sure, I'd love to have won today, uh, won it all, uh, but Purdue left it all out there. Yeah, uh, that's a, they played the better team. So, uh, Karen Gerlach says, never more proud, ever faithful, ever true. Karen, great, great time this season, getting to kind of know you virtually. Always proud of this team. Uh, thank you, BD, for all your help, or all, your, all you have to do with this format. Yeah, um, yeah it was fun. Tim Swartzel, I got to spend a minute with today, says, I uh, just said it, Purdue was great, UConn was better. That's it. Uh, yeah, nothing to not be proud of there. Um, I, I, I know in the black and white, uh, everything's got to be really stark. Uh, social media-fueled world we have, there's just, there's no shades of gray, and you got to be stupid, like people talk up there. Um, but... Um, yeah, I, uh, the Purdue, Purdue's a great team, and uh, UConn's a better team. Um, Colby says, need to quit drinking after this. Pull her up regardless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, never good. Never good to drink if you're uh, upset. 
you know, I, it, it's not a good, not a good practice. Um, yeah, Ed Albany says, remember watching it to be a season, what a year. It's a tremendous season, tremendous year. Good time for everybody to get to know each other. Uh, if you're going to the spring game, we should, we should keep going. I mean, well, let's put your, put your, uh, your faith, your whatever, your uh, attention into that basket and go watch some football. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Walter's boys uh, get better as the season goes on. I, they're going to, they are so lowly uh, rated in predictions. Uh, last in the conference, second last in the conference by many people who prognosticate they're not going to be that bad. Um, I'm guessing in the middle of the conference, but the, then again, I'm just guessing because there are so many things that Purdue has to get better at. They went out and got some needs solved in the offensive line. The receiver position is still a big question mark for me. I think Card can be better. Offensive coordinator has to do better calling plays. Has to do better guy, getting guys prepared. Uh, Ryan Clip says, I go to Phoenix Friday, surrounded by Purdue family out there. It was amazing. Getting the monkey off the back uh, for Purdue in March was also amazing. Eric D says, wish I would have worn gold. Wish they would have worn gold uniforms. They'll be back even stronger next year. I hate, I hate the <clears throat> modern uh, Nike gold uniforms. I hate them. I, I, it looks, it's an awful color in my opinion. And I, and I think I might be in the minority here for Purdue fans, but I don't, I don't like that that urine stained off white beige color. I just don't like it. That's just me. It's not a it's not a good color. Um, I don't think anybody can look good in it. Uh, you could put uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan in those uniforms and he's not going to look great in them. So Zach Britt says, uh, just another building block. Purdue is heading the right direction and doing it the right way. Proud of the whole squad. Proud of the whole squad. Proud of the, um, uh, proud of paint taking big step, steps forward. Uh, proud of the Purdue family. Like I said today, it was awesome. Um, but that's about it. Uh, thanks to those of you guys who stayed up super late back east. Uh, those of you who are still awake, you're probably, uh, maybe you're having a hard time winding down. I was just lamenting that how much fun it would have been to, to, to not go to sleep tonight because I think I would have had a hard time getting to sleep. So, um, yeah. But uh, thanks to everybody all season. Um, uh, we'll be talking here and um, at 2 a.m. back in back in Indiana. Um, but, yeah, uh, we'll be around. And um, But it's been a good season. It's been fun. Uh, fun journey with everybody. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, Andrew Schultz says thanks for hosting. Yeah. So <clears throat> thanks to everybody again. And um, uh, it was a lot of fun. So hammer down, guys, girls, friends, and family. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, that's, a, that's a hell of a season. See ya.